Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman. In today's GB Studio tutorial video, we're gonna be looking at tile sets and background animations. In GB Studio 4, this is handled using events, so there's much less stuff to worry about. In GB Studio 4.1.3, we're on now, you can press add event, replace tile at position, or replace tile from sequence if you want to animate. So it makes life a lot, lot easier. So first of all, we're going to talk about tile sets and tile switching and and from sequences so that we can understand why we might want to use these events in the first place. So as you can see, we're in the sample town of the sample project and we see these flowers and they're, they're nicely swaying from side to side. We have this waterfall that looks like it's cascading down this rock face. And then we have this little bit of animated bit here that looks like the water is trickling into this lake. So this is just happening in the background, basically. It's just going on as usual. There's a tick that's happening. And uh, as it as the game ticks over, it is updating the background tiles as it goes along. So the first point is that it's very simple. And it adds some dynamics to the scene that we might not have otherwise had. Um, and it brings the game to life a bit. But you can also imagine that there are other ways of using these kind of things. For example, um, making somebody's mouth talk if you have a big um, character that's filling a screen and you want to make their mouth move you might make it um, animated using this thing or instead of updating every single tick or you know um, on a loop you might update when a certain piece of information changes so for example my HUD tutorials in the past um, the idea is that there's a strip of information across the bottom and when the variables change in your um, in your game it displays those variables depending on a tile set that you've already set out. So I'm going to talk to you about how these animated tile sets work and um, how you can use them in your own stuff. So first of all let's jump back into GB Studio and I can show you what GB Studio is doing. So if we come over to the sample town scene, we can see we have this piece of waterfall here and each of these three tiles are exactly the same, but they do not appear anywhere else in the scene. And that is what we call a unique tile. And if you know what that means, it means if we change this tile, one of these unique tiles, it will change all of the ones that have the same tile image. So the Game Boy works by deconstructing these background images and then reconstructing them in tiles. So the, each of these images is made up of all of these tiles and that's why in a game or in a scene we can only have a certain amount of unique tiles and so sometimes we have to get creative about how we display our artwork and sometimes we might have to simplify what we've done which is sometimes a shame but it's all part of the creative process and thinking about how you can optimize your games. So if we click on the scene here we can see in the right we have attached timer script to timer 1 and if we click on these, we can change which timer we're using. And we can change the time interval between each of the changes, the which, uh, as you can imagine, will affect how quickly the animated tiles are updated. Um, how quickly, you know, for example, the waterfall will look like it's falling, or how quickly the flower will look like it's, it's going from side to side. So if we now look at this replace tile from sequence, the at is referring to this location. So if you look, if we look down here, there's only three pieces of sequence that are happening here. One of them is on this piece of waterfall. One of them is on this piece of water land that we that I showed you in the game. And the last one is on a flower. So if we zoom out, we have to find which flower it's referring to. There we go. It's the one on the left. And like I said, because all of the flowers are exactly the same tile image, it will replace every single flower in the scene. And it will means it will also replace every single uh, waterfall tile as long as it's using the same exact artwork um, in the background image. So now let's deconstruct this event a bit more. We have the location, we already know that, and we have the tile set, and then we have from tile zero, animation frames four. And then it's using a variable, and that's just keeping track of which um, number it is currently in this sequence. So this is using a local one and so each of these variables are a local one. And if you know my tutorials before, local ones are kept in this scene basically. So there's no reason for it to be taken outside or this, this piece of information be taken outside of this scene 
possibly. So having it just in as a local is quite smart. Global variables go to, from scene to st scene and they stay consistent, but that's not important right now. Let's talk about the tile set. And to do that, we'll actually look at the tile set and I'll open it up in GIMP. All right, so here we are in GIMP. This is a free image editing software that lets you, for example, make pixel art like we're doing here. Um, and I've opened the file that was in the tile set folder of our project called waterfall. And this is the file that it's that the animated waterfall was referencing. So if I turn on the grid and I set the grid to be eight by eight and red so we can see it better, then we can see that we have eight tiles here. We have uh, four on the top and four on the bottom. Now the Game Boy and GB Studio uses eight by eight pixel tiles. So that's how I got that information of like, where are the tiles? And we also need to remember that we're using a computer device and they start counting from zero. So this is tile zero, this is tile one, this is tile two, this is tile three, and this is tile four, five, six, seven. So we have four tiles on top, four tiles on the bottom, and that means we we have eight tiles. So that means when we're referencing this tile set and we want to use the top four, we have to say it begins on tile zero, and then we can say that there are four tiles in this animation. And if we want to reference this bottom set of tiles, we have to say the uh, animation begins on tile four, and it has four tiles. So if we go back and look at GB Studio, we can maybe make a bit more sense of what that means. As you can see, this waterfall event says from tile zero, and it has four animation frames. And so we know that the zero means the top left one in the uh, in the image. And then we can see that this second waterfall one says uh, from tile four, and it has four frames. So just like I laid out to you, that's how it's working out which tile is next. And for the flowers, we can uh, go back into GIMP and I can show you what that looks like, but it's much simpler because there's only four tiles. And here we are, we can see that there are only four flowers in this image and they have a middle, right, middle, left. And that just will mean that it looks like it's being animated as it, as it goes from side to side. It's no more complicated than that, but now we're gonna have a look at switching scenes and using a tile set that is what we call a common tile set in order to make the scenes switch without any lag. So first of all, we're looking at this scene here. We have two uh, trigger boxes here and each of them bring us into the other scene. So if we click on this, we can see that the fade speed we've set to uh, instant. And the idea is that we want it to feel like there is no time between visually going from one scene to the other. And currently we can see on this little button here, a uh, common tile sets are set to none. And so we can see what happens when we uh, try and go from scene to scene. So if we move around here, we can go from this scene and boom. And if you look close enough, you can see that there is some very heavy visual glitching. And so what we'd really want to do in GB Studio, if this was actually set up like this, would be to set the fade speed to faster. Uh, which will make it so it, it fades from black or white, depending on what we set the fade to. Um, and it goes in and out of darkness or lightness. So we'll have a I'll press play and so you can see what that means. So now I've set it to faster, we can have a look. And as you can see, it fades from white um, first and then goes into the next scene. And this can slow down your game. And if you're doing animations, for example, um, or having cutscenes play out with these with these scenes, it can maybe be quite jarring, or it might just go against how your game plays. So let's have a look at how we'd change that. So I am looking in the documents of GB Studio, and I'm in the scenes tab, and we're going down to common tile sets. And as it warns us, it's uh, it might require you to know a bit more about how graphics and memory are loaded in, into your game which I do think is true because you have to understand what tile sets are and you might have to be a bit more careful about how you construct your scenes so that you can have a common tile set between uh, two different scenes. Yeah, so as we've seen, we set it to instant and we saw some glitchy graphics. So we set it back to um, that faster so that it wouldn't be so glitchy. 
But to fix that glitchiness, we need two things. We need a common tile set and we need a common tile set that actually has the same tile set between these two scenes. I downloaded these images here, this background east, background west, and the town. And as you can see here, we have a west and an east scene. And if we click on the tile set one, we can see that we have the the common tile set. And it's not just um, a load of the tiles put together like we saw in the tile set of the, the animated waterfall or the flowers. It's actually, it looks like a scene. So what this means is if you want to break up a bigger scene, it might be quite easy to do that because you can use that bigger scene as the common tile set. Or if you're, if you're building your scenes using tile sets, then you can just put the tile set into the tile set folder and uh, not have to worry too much about this issue. However, I do feel like this is a quite a complex topic for uh, absolute beginners. So I would definitely just put the fade speed to, you know, one faster and not have to worry too much about this stuff yet until you your game like is actually held back by the fact that you can't um, switch scenes instantly. And so all, all of these two scenes are doing, they have a common tile set of that image I showed you, the town, and it means that they're sharing tile data so that when they switch, they're not having to unload the previous tiles data and then reload the new tile data. They're sharing tile data so it can just happen instantly, which is quite lovely. I'm very glad that they've added that into this version of GB Studio. So if we now look at the scene and we click on this little jigsaw piece and we go down to town, and then we do that for both of these uh, scenes. Then they now have a common tile set and we can set the fade speed to instant. And then we can press play and see how it looks. So here we are again, let's, have a, let's take a look. We go boom. And now I do see a tiny amount of flashing, but I think that might be because of the, the palettes not being the same. That's exactly what's happening. I can actually see the different colors as well, um, which is a which is a weird quirk. But I know how to. I think I would know how to fix that, because I myself have set these background palettes to be automatic, and if you set it to manual, then you can you can set what the the backgrounds actually look like, um, and this this background palette automatic is just pulling from the image colors. So if we now set it to manual and we then set it to that green we can see how it looks so we're back in slightly different green but it doesn't matter because i i was just um trying out the automatic versus manual background colors and we can see that it's exactly there is absolutely no flickering whatsoever now because we've set the uh the colors ourselves. So what i'm getting from this is that that the automatic background palette function is probably doing something interesting in the background of like setting the colors when the, when the scene starts, uh, which is uh, not contributing to a smooth transition of these scenes. So keep that in mind. And uh, there's one last thing I wanna show you guys, and it's uh, something like this that looks quite cool. And it's using tile priority to make it look like the, the character's actually going behind uh, things. But as you can see, there is a slight issue and, it, and it's actually, a good thing is a function of this of this thing is is that white pixels are behind the player, and any other pixel is in front of the player of the player. Okay, it's called tile priority, and you you set it in GB Studio by going to the color option, and then tile priority is the diamond with the exclamation mark in it, and then you can paint on the tile priority, uh, just like you would paint on the different palettes. But what we've done is we've we've teamed up the collision with the edges of the trees that aren't the stump um, and then so that the player can walk on these pieces and then using the tile priority we've made it so that the the actual parts of the tree will display in front of the player and so for example and even they can go behind the house as well um, and this is just to make the world feel a bit more 3d and less um, like it has rigid edges that it don't, don't make sense. So if you haven't tried this before, definitely uh, read the uh, GB Studio docs and think about how you would maybe take away the the, the white from this, these images. Uh, for example, with this, um, or from these tiles, I mean. And for example, with this chimney, you might take away the, the white bit and just replace it with 
a, the lighter shade of green so it doesn't look like the player is coming through the house through the chimney you know um, and just the same with the trees you might want only a few pixels that are white on the trees so that it looks like the trees are kind of see-through um, because right now the artwork is implying that the that the white is actually a very bright part of the tree that's reflecting a lot of light from the sun but uh, when you walk through it, it actually then implies that there's a hole through the tree. So uh, it will depend on how your artwork or how you suit your artwork and how the player interacts with it. But yeah, I hope this has given you something else to think about. And I hope now that you have some ideas of how you might use um, some of these advanced techniques to make your games come more alive. If you're new to GB Studio, then this might not be what you need to be hearing, but uh, it's always nice to know that the engine you're using has these advanced functions that would make your games look better in the future. So uh, so let me know if you've tried any of these techniques before or if you're uh, going to try them out in your game, what you'd like to see next from me. So I'll put my patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Please let me know if you found this uh, tutorial useful. I tried to keep it short and simple, and I hope you can use this information to make your games um, come alive. And don't forget to look in the sample project, learn from that, like what little things you could do and change to make your own games um, more interesting. So I'll thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.